So this is the necropolis of Santa Andrea Priu. This goes back at least to the fourth millennium BC. So this is one of the oldest known sites in Sardinia. And behind me, you can see an array of incredibly sophisticated hypergeums carved out of solid rock. And up on the top there, we have the 3D representation of the sacred bull, an image we find carved all over this country. So let's go in there and take a look because I believe these are some of the most important and most sophisticated rock cut hypergeums in Sardinia. So this area over here on the left as you enter the, the complex is actually cut off. It's got these strange steps almost at such an angle you, can, you can't really walk up them, but it's got a very interesting tomb entrance just there. Then you have these rock carvings here in the solid rock. Then, then these are the main tombs behind this large chunk of rock in this small hill. In fact, this stone here on top of that is where the steps are that look just like those from Peru. It continues up there, but up there, just up there behind those trees, that's where the sacred 3D bull is in high relief which would be looking out, protecting the site, facing west, southwest to the setting sun. Here we have some steps that look like they've been carved out of solid rock. And again, this is something very similar to what we find in ancient Peru and Bolivia. So an extremely sophisticated craftsmanship. This is obviously very badly weathered, but it shows you a fine example of the kind of way they work with stone at this particular site and in this part of Sardinia. You can see those steps over in the distance then we have like a, what looks like some kind of outdoor tomb or bath here and then the amazing steps carved right here So we're now approaching the main necropolis of Sant Andrea Priu near Benorva. This is a very interesting site. It's got some of the most impressive hypergeums. This is why I've got the torch on my head. And it's got the largest one in the whole country, in fact. And it has the amazing roofs or ceilings, which we're gonna have a look at now. So we're here at tomb number nine. You can see there's carvings already on the outside, but let's just take the steps up and here, is what is really interesting. This is the kind of sacred spot where they would make offerings to the dead. And then as they, as you come inside the tomb here, so let's go inside, have a look at it. You see like a bed here. You can really hear the echo in here. This is quite amazing. It's very similar to the, uh, the underground tomb with the two bull's head at the Cartwright site. Um, it's very echoey, it's amazing. So was this an acoustic chamber, much like the Hypogeum in Malta? This is another tomb. Again, we have this very interesting entrance area where the sacred libations or goods were given to the dead. We have this doorway with two other niches, massive echoes in here. Wow. And this is impressive. And this is the one I really wanted to look at, in fact. This is the one. Oh my God, this is the one with the incredible roof. So this is the main reason I wanted to come to this site. I wanted to see this, this amazing roof. It almost looks like it's made of wood. Isn't that incredible? Just looking at it from this one position. If I just zoom upwards so you can see the rest of it. It's like made out of wooden beams. It's like a tent almost with these great pillars and it continues behind it over there. 
with niches all around. What a remarkable sight. This is amazing. This is incredible. So this is just one of the most unique designs. We don't find this anywhere in the world really, apart from here and in the Etruscan world. So we have to question, is this linked to the Etruscans of ancient Italy? It most certainly seems so. This is up at one end, as you walk in, it's on the left. This huge area, a like curved area. And we have another niche in there, just near the entrance with the amazing roof just above it. Another one over there. And then that's the back. And we have another one here and here. So this really is something special, this place. What an amazing hypergeum tomb this is. It's absolutely incredible. Carved out of solid rock. This is the trachyte outcrops. This is hard rock. It's not like soft limestone. This is a major megalithic operation. It's a big respect to the builders. So this is the tomb of the chief. This is the main primary tomb. And you can see some later additions here by the Romans and the Byzantine people. And on the ceiling, you see this massive like sun disc with carvings all the way around. And then an offering table, almost like a giant cat's footprint at the entrance. So this is Ladomus. Number nine, Tuma del Capo. And you can see the shape of it in this picture. There's so much going on here. Many different chambers. And you can see the way it's got huge doorways carved out of solid rock. Massive pillars. This is amazing. Massive pillars, paintings all over the wall by the later Christians and Byzantine peoples. On the right hand side here, I have another area that goes all the way through there. looks like some kind of false door, much like we find in Peru, such as at the um, famous Stargate next to Lake Titicaca. Huge carved out of the roof as well, in the back chamber here. So this really is one of the most important sites in Sardinia. It's got multiple tombs, it's got incredibly sophisticated rock carving. Uh, it's been reused by various cultures from the 4th millennium BC right up to Roman and Byzantine times. And it's an incredible achievement. It's on par with the Hypogeum of Halfacini in Malta. It's got um, some beautiful solar kind of imagery on the roof. and. Um, we haven't seen any bull carvings, but we know there is a 3D bull carved in solid rock outside on the top, which had his head broken off. What's this? So here's some kind of chasm that's cut out of this rock here.
So this is the famous bull of um, Santa Andrea Priu. The hypogeums are below this, and although there's no carvings of the bull's heads inside the actual hypogeums that at least that have, have been found, they may have been destroyed of course, this would have been a 3D representation of the bull they worship, with the head that end facing more or less southwest, with the rump here, and like a dolmen, you can go underneath it and you can actually sit inside it. Absolutely amazing absolutely stunning and you can just see the shape it's just stunning and uh, they've also got obviously we have the Peruvian type steps carved out of solid rock so they're really master stonemasons here at Santa Andrea Priu and you see lots of lichen here so it's obviously thousands of years old if we're talking about the fourth millennium BC who did this who did these hypogeums was it some other culture that came in or was it part of the Aziri culture Absolutely stunning. So this is potentially the front of the bull. The head would have been on top there. And you can see below, just in the lower part there, there's some kind of entrance in where maybe offerings were made to the bull god. I think one thing that gets me about this is that it's an absolute kind of sign or symbol of dominance over this area. And this was pre neurogic could even be pre-Aziri culture. Seems like a much more ancient peoples were here carving these incredible tombs, which are incredibly reminiscent of many of the Etruscan, tomb, uh, Etruscan tombs north of Rome. Uh, this structure here is on top of the hill with the bull just the other side, but we actually have a look in here just sort of put the camera in, you can see like large megaliths surrounding this I believe is the entrance where you go down into the main tomb, the largest hypogeum. We have one final mini hypogeum here, just carved into the rock at the top of the complex near the sacred bull. You can just see holes in the ground here. Very interesting, just everywhere. You obviously found these very important, these ancient peoples.